listening and asking. So as we all know as seismic interpreters, and if you want to get good data to come out, you first have to get good data to go into your, into your algorithms. And so I'm going to talk about two methods to do that today really quickly, spectral balancing and then also structure-oriented filtering. And those are two common algorithms that we run most of our seismic data through when doing seismic interpretations in ASPE. So spectral balancing is the first method. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to increase some of the higher, we call them whiter or bluer, um, parts of the spectrum um, without increasing too much of the noise to improve our seismic interpretations. And so we do this um, by first calculating each spectral component and then rescaling them so they're slightly more equalized. And so this is an example of some original seismic amplitude data before spectral balancing and then after spectral balancing. And you can notice that we've got some increase in the frequency content up here in the Marble Falls formation. And so I'll go through it a couple more times so you can look really closely at what's going on there with the spectral balancing. Great, so here's another example um, in a different area. I think this is offshore New Zealand, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so here I've highlighted a few areas with the colored boxes, and I'll go back and forth a few times so you can see the effect of spectral balancing on the data. Again, increasing the high frequency content. And you can see that it tries to help us um, image the stratigraphy a little bit better and some of the structural elements. All right, so the second method I wanted to talk about was structure-oriented filtering. And this is another method that's been around um, and well-established for quite a while. And this allows us to do some filtering along the structure uh, that, we're, that we're looking at in the subsurface. And so after applying this, we've got our original data. So same as I was kind of showing before, the filtered data. And then we can also look at the rejected noise along um, from the structurally oriented filtering. And this lets us double check that we're not removing anything that might be geologic signal or any information in the data that we may want to keep in there to improve our interpretations. Um, we also have a workflow in ASPE that helps us suppress some of the, the noise we get from very steep dips. Um, particularly in the low frequencies. And so we do this by creating a number of filter banks. And so here's the original data. Here's the spectral balance of the original data between 5 and 120 hertz. And you can see with the yellow arrows, we're trying to point out some of those uh, features <laughs> um, that and reflections, uh, you know, that we don't want in, to keep in the data. And so after doing the low frequency structurally oriented filtering, you can see that those are removed. I'll go back and forth a couple of times. And so hopefully you're able to see the difference. Um, we can also in ASPE look and just see what the spectra looks like before, for the original data and then after we do the low frequency SOF and the spectral balancing. And so pretty much, I don't want to go in a video into all of the math, but we have all of it up on our website, um, the details of the workflow, the exact calcula calculations of the algorithms. And so you can just hop on over to that. Um, they're just saved on there as PDFs for anyone to look at if you're curious. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me at aspie.ou.edu.